Good day, everyone. Welcome back from lunch. Uh, this is a uh, session, uh, the next couple of sessions, actually, of lightning talk. So 10 minutes, quick and dirty. Hopefully, you learn something new or interesting. Um, there are 10 minutes between each session as well. So I do recommend that if there are other sessions after this that you want to go to, especially if they're on the other end of the convention center, you kind of scurry over just so you make it in time and get a seat. Um, just making sure that I've got everything right. Uh, First up, we have Nicola Pellucci, and he's going to talk about popular Git workflows you haven't heard about. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thank you for the vote of confidence in your clapping. We were debating if you're here because of my fancy title. So uh, popular, Git, popular or not so popular Git workflows so you may or may not have heard about. My name is Nicola Paolucci, I'm a developer advocate at Atlassian. I've been talking about Git for three and a half years, sharing my uh, experience with co collaboration around code. And I want to start with the only true workflow, the only one you need to know that's going to bring you and uh, take you a long way to success, and is this one. <laughs> and <laughs> if you had to think of a Git command that applies to this, I'm so sure some of you might get it. It's, uh, Git force push. That's the, that's the only thing you need to get going, the only workflow you need. No, in all honesty, OK, you all laughed. But for people less familiar, please don't do this. This is not a real workflow. This will not solve your problems. <laughs> so that's not. Otherwise, we're done, the end of the talk. So today, I want to talk to you about three things. Uh, there's uh, some popular workflows, mainstream workflows. I'm calling them here the golden bunch, which have been adopted in the industry in broad sense, in broad numbers, and they are very successful. But there's also other teams and other uh, ways to work around Git that are slightly different. There's one thing I call the old guard. The actual creators of Git, or the, the developers working in the Linux kernel, use Git and, and use slightly different branching models, a slightly different way to work. I'll show you how that works. And uh, maybe from those, you can get some ideas of, how, of things to bring it back into your teams. And third, there's a, a school of thought that doesn't like merges too much, or at least uh, then merges can create a little bit of complexity at a really massive scale. So I'll tell you a little bit why that camp doesn't want to do merges and they want to squash commits. Those are the three things I want to tell you about. It all starts with one principle. So, all the successful workflows of teams using Git start from this idea that you branch the work, you isolate your work in branches, and you develop your feature in a, in a branch, and then you merge it, and you review it, and merge it when you're done. That's the base of all of them. But over time, processes have evolved, workflows have evolved, and, uh, and a few successful processes have emerged. And you can see, we've gone through a few, and we, as cats, have decided which ones were the good ones. I just want to mention a few of those. I cannot go into very much de big detail into those. I only have six minutes left. Uh, but just so that you can go th and study them and look them up. One very popular one is called Git Flow. It's very prescriptive, uh, fairly complex. It has a few branches to take care to, but it allows to, for, an, for a relatively sizable software team to really manage the life cycle of your project in a very efficient way. For teams that need to do cloud development, uh, for example, this is the workflow that we use internally at, in the Bitbucket Cloud team, we can use a slightly more simplified workflow that has a master that represents anything that goes to master, goes to production, and then a development branch, sometimes called develop, sometimes called staging. I'll tell you more about this one. And then there's a third line of workflows which add a little bit more complexity, which is when you require when you're required to manage long-living branches, long-living maintenance branches. All of those, we have videos on, on, on the Atlassian uh, YouTube account. We presented them before. But just for a quick refresh of how one of these you know, uh, mainstream processes that we use internally, uh, this is how the Bitbucket Cloud team works, for example. Anything merged to master is a production release. Um, any new feature on bug fix is actually branched off st the staging uh, branch. So, uh, and then there's a review, a review happens, uh, anything else gets back merged to staging, and when, when a, a number of features is complete, there's a production release. Relatively straightforward, and as I said, 
We have videos explaining this in much more detail. But we're here for the less popular workflows. So let's talk about the old guard. So I was thinking, somebody old and powerful has Gandalf for you. And so how does the team that actually write Git work? And they work in a slightly peculiar, slightly different way. For example, they use a mailing list as a central hub of all the code contributions uh, that the team wants to evaluate. So if you want to contribute to Git, or if you're a good contributor, you, run, you work on your isolated branch, but then you mail your patches to this mailing list. And you can have an open conversation with domain experts in the specific area that you're touching. And it's a very nice way to work if you want a consensus, if you have a community to manage. Also, the, the Git team has a very a strange way, or at least an interesting way, to tackle uh, when, um, changes when, when release happens. Some of the branches are fluid. So what that means is that when there's a new release, some of the branches are zeroed and restarted from scratch from the commit of the new release. Let me show you how that works. So say you're a Git contributor, and we have one here, by the way. <laughs> Lars gave a talk yesterday. And uh, you, you have uh, some interesting ideas, some new feature you want to bring to Git. You create a topic branch. So well, they call them topic branches. We call them feature branches. It's the same thing. And then you mail those commits to the mailing list to have a discussion with the committers. Uh, if the discussion is successful and uh, some of the maintainers are interested in taking on that, that change, uh, that, that set of changes is merging something called proposed updates. That doesn't mean your change has made it into Git proper yet. Uh, there's a review cycle that goes, goes, goes on for a little bit, and when the code is relatively stable, it gets merged into another branch called next, which represents changes that are about to merge into Git proper. The, when the, that code is stable and rock solid, there's a final merge into master. Anything merged to master will be part of the next release of Git. And so they, they create a tag. And then the interesting bit about this is that uh, once a, a Git release has happened, the, the maintenance branch and the next branch are zeroed and reset. And this, I think, is an interesting idea for teams everywhere to take on, because it makes it very easy for developers to understand where do they need to apply the next patch? So this is, a, I thought it was a cool idea from a less used workflow that you might consider for, for your teams. The third thing I wanted to mention today is about a camp in software development that doesn't like merges too much. And uh, I thought, yeah, well, how do I, how do I represent this? Yeah, this is like an archon merging from a video game called StarCraft. <laughs> so uh, a while ago, I was talking to um, the Jira release manager, Lukas, uh, works out of Gdansk. And he was telling me that they have a really big team, more than 30 developers in the team, everybody creating branches. And it can get complex managing a lot of commits in a lot of branches. So what they do, they do manually squash a lot of commits, make sure that during pull requests, the number of commits is atomic and clean, and people can really find out what a certain commit does and what does it solve cleanly. So the camp that advocates using squashing commits and reducing the number of merges uh, does something like this. Let me show you on screen. You still branch off and create a feature branch for your development. But then at the end of it, or during the review, you make sure only the right number of commits is, is uh, uh, you know, committed to staging. So or maybe three commits become one feature commit. And then some teams decide they don't really need merges. So what they do, they just move commits around. And then they have a clean, flat history. And then what's on staging, on one point, gets fast forwarded to master, and everything is clean and flat. It's a bit different from what you know, we at Atlassian do, but it has some advantages. So for example, history becomes flat. Uh, the, one of the major benefits is that uh, troubleshooting, like debugging, uh, uh, a, a full tree of branches can be, become, make it become hard with bisect, and blaming becomes a little bit hard. With a flat history, you, you don't have that problem. And uh, so you have a flat history, it's a slightly more readable if you open it in a visual client, and uh, some teams really enjoy working like that. Now, as a final thing I want to tell you is, this, this way of working is now possible in Bitbucket Server. As of uh, Bitbucket Server 4.9, 
We have added a whole host of features uh, of uh, feature flags that you can toggle in the admin interface that allow you, if it's something you want to consider, may, you know, squashing commits of feature branches so that your history becomes a little bit more clean and more linear, you can turn this on, and then when you click the Merge button, you will have op the option to choose or squash your commits if that's the only option that you chose. So I thought I'd give you, very quickly, I'm done with the time, uh, three or four new ideas to consider in your development team. If there's questions about this, I'm happy to walk over stage and we can talk about it in the hall. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Awesome, okay. thanks Nicola. Um, yeah, round one is over. You've got a little less than 10 minutes to get to the next session. So uh, hopefully we'll see you there.